He is uh, the Pro Bowl center, all pro center of the Carolina Panthers and the guy that we went use our go-to guy in our podcast era whenever there was anything going on uh, with the Carolina Panthers. Uh, he is none other than Ryan Khalil here on the Rich Eisen Show for the first time. How are you, Ryan? Rich, I'm good. I'm a little under the weather. How so? Last last few weeks. I, I've been fighting this thing, um, but still playing. Okay. I haven't missed any games. They don't make them like they used to, Rich. Well, what do you, is this a Mung situation, Ryan? Is that what you got going on? It's an infection in my lungs. Are you serious? Yeah. Damn, man. What isn't going on with your team these days? I don't know. But I fought through it, Rich. Yes, you did. I fought through it. You because, sure did. I mean, what, because that's, that's just how I'm built. That's but I'm it. humble. I, I don't want to talk about myself. I, I know that, even though there is an eye in Khalil. <laughs> um, uh, don't you love that when guys say that? What do you mean? When, when they talk about themselves and then they say, well, but I'm humble, though. I don't, I don't talk about myself. Well, especially when they say that uh, after going third person. Humble guys don't talk about themselves. No, they don't. They certainly don't. And you are a humble guy. And you're also a first-place center right now at 5-8-1 and one with an ability to win out and, and host a playoff game and be the first ever back-to-back -back champions of the NFC South. That's never happened. Uh, how has this happened in your estimation, Ryan? Um, well, a lot of teams in the NFC South uh, came up short. And, uh, you know, we are in a very fortunate position where we find ourselves in the mix. And uh, it's crazy. It's, it's um, you know, the season, you know, I've been a part of losing seasons before. And <clears throat> they, they, when you get to a certain point where, you know, the playoff picture is out of the question, it, it goes slow and it's hard. Um, you know, but when you're winning – uh, and everything's going right. Season goes by fast. And, and it's kind of felt like that this year because all year long we've been in the mix. Even though we've lost these games, some of them close, some of them not so much. Um, you know, you go home, you're upset, and then all of a sudden all these teams lost. And, hey, you're still in it. You're still in it. So, again, we've been, we've been very fortunate. Um, it's like you said, it's a similar situation to, uh, you know, when Seattle went that year and a lot of teams with better records were out of it and, a lot of people were upset, but that's how that's how it's set up. That's how it goes. So we'll uh, <clears throat> we gotta we gotta win out. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter. And uh, huge bear fan tonight. Huge bear fan. Tonight. <laughs> You're rooting hard for Cutler, huh? <laughs> oh, let's go Cutler. <laughs> Ryan Khalil, the Panther Center, joining me here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. What was last week like? Walk me through the highs and lows of boat racing New Orleans, seeing your quarterback on a stretcher, this car flipped over four times, talking about his own mortality at the podium, and then winning this football game uh, with Derek Anderson beating the Bucks for a second time this season. Walk me through this week, Ryan. Well, initial thought when I heard about the accident and knowing who we were playing that week, um, I had a theory that the whole thing was staged. <laughs> Because Cam missed the first week against the Bucks. Yeah. So my theory is, he, for whatever reason, he's scared of the Bucks. <laughs> now, uh, Ryan, that's next level theory right here. Yeah. Ryan. yeah well, I'm still digging into it. Mm -hmm. I haven't. I don't have a lot of facts yet, um, and I'll get back to you once I do. <laughs> but uh, no, it was crazy. I mean, uh, you know, it was a routine Monday, and he was coming into the stadium um, to watch some film or do whatever Cam does order some more bad clothes for his post game nice. interviews. Um, and, and he was, he went across an intersection that the city's had problems with <clears throat> um, based on how it's set up with stop signs and stuff. And lady was trying to jet through and, uh, and side wiped his truck and it's a little top heavy and it flipped over about four times. And, mm. um, I got a bunch of text messages that morning. I hadn't gone in yet, and, and it was crazy. We uh, <clears throat> Everybody was trying to figure out what was going on, if he was okay, obviously. And then once we found out he was fine, then we were trying to figure out if he was going to play. And So it all happened kind of fast. I think the fortunate thing for us, though, from you know the team's mentality was that we're very lucky to have two Pro Bowl quarterbacks. And I don't think anybody else <clears throat> in the NFL can say that. And um, obviously uh, Derek came in first game of the year and played really well and played really well yesterday too and and uh <clears throat> so i think we'll cam will kind of be week to week and you know he's still our guy he's still our starting quarterback but in the meantime um 
the guys feel very comfortable having having Derek in there. He's just uh, he's an incredible professional. He does a good job week in week out, being ready with the game plan and um and uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of result of that. Ryan Khalil, the Panther Center, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. We noticed Derek Anderson picking up the first down with his feet yesterday. <clears throat> we noticed that. We also noticed that he reminded himself it seemed a little bit late after picking up the first down to do the Cam Newton finger point for the first down, and everybody got fired up with that one. That was pretty funny, Ryan. Yeah, those guys are really close and, uh, like, weirdly close. I know they're kind of like long-lost brothers, but um, it's fun watching those guys practice all week, and, and uh, they bring a lot of energy to the team, and, and – uh, and that stuff's contagious. So, yeah, Derek does a good job with that. Yeah, he got up, and then uh, Cam was all fired up about the whole thing. So what about this team moving forward, Ryan? What what can you tell me about the Carolina Panthers' readiness to to take this thing down and host a playoff game and actually make some noise? Because, uh, no, think... you know, I mean, you hear it, Ryan. You hear it. I mean, nobody believes the NFC South can do a single thing. Sure. Uh, or so, some. And, and i got to be honest, I, I I'm one of those people who's banging the drum saying that whoever wins a division sub-500 doesn't deserve the playoff game in this day and age. It's all right. I forgive you. That's a, I know. Listen, but at least I can say it to you. You know, I'm not going to hang up the phone and, and remind everybody right. how I've said it. Well, you and I are good like if that. If we don't make it to the playoffs, Rich, then I agree with you 100%. <laughs> yeah, right. But, I mean, so. in, terms of, in terms of getting there, how can you make noise, do you think, Ryan? <clears throat> well, I think I – think you know, our biggest problem this year has been, you know, we made a ton of changes in the off season, um, and uh, you know, some of that is um, for long term growth. Some of it was because we we kind of have a tough situation with our cap stuff, and um, and those decisions are hard. And I don't envy the guys upstairs and the GM that have to do that stuff. Um, and you never know. I think the biggest thing with us was is we brought in a lot of really good young talent. But we've kind of, you know, the effort's been there. The talent's been there week in, week out. Discipline, inexperience has killed us. You know, we, we got a lot of young guys. I mean, even yesterday's game, we had six rookies. We started yesterday. I think they said it was the most in our franchise history. <clears throat> and um, so that's kind of been the result of our season's kind of been that. We've kind of you've, you've had a lot of really good stuff we put on film and then just a lot of inconsistency. And that's how – it's been all season long and all the different phases have kind of taken turns. Last few games have been a little bit different where you kind of see, like when we played the Saints, who I think is still a good football team, we just took turns making plays. Everybody took turns making plays. We, we had very few errors. Mm -hmm. um, Cam played lights out. The offensive line blocked really well. The defense played lights out. Special teams was good. Um, and that was the result of that game. And then this week, too, who, by the way, I've been in the league. This will be my ninth year coming up. Yep. That was the best two and whatever team I've ever played. That those guys up front are unbelievable. McCoy, who had a really bum knee yesterday's game, was still bringing it every play. Those guys up front are incredibly wow. good. One That's... of the best defensive fronts I played all year, and I think, I think. They're going to be a scary team in our division moving forward. Yeah, well, listen, um, <clears throat> thanks for calling in. Are you, I mean, do you, you know, Susie, as you remember, she covered you at USC. She makes a mean chicken soup. Do you want my wife to send you something good, Ryan? A little bit of the Jewish uh, penicillin? Send love your it. way to help you out? I would absolutely love it. Okay, we're going to send that to you. <laughs> uh, Ryan, take care of yourself. Thanks for calling in. Good luck against Johnny Football. That you got Johnny Football next, Ryan. <laughs> Good luck. We do. You we do. do. You do. Stay right there, uh, everybody at home. Thank you for calling in, Ryan Khalil. You take care. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.